हेलो स्टूडेंट्स सो टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द मोरेज लॉ एंड वी विल फाइंड दैट देयर इज अ सम यू कैन से दैट दैट इन द स्टेटमेंट ऑफ द मोरेज लॉ देयर वर सम प्रिडिक्शन ऑफ द रिगार्डिंग द आई सीज इन द फॉर द नियर फ्यूचर सो इन द फेमस मोरेज लॉ विच वॉज अ प्रो फाउंडेड प्रो फाउंडेड बाय द गोल्डन मोरे हु वॉज द को फाउंडर ऑफ द इंटेल इन नाइनटीन सिक्सटी फाइव मोरे ऑब्जर्व दैट द नंबर ऑफ द ट्रांजिस्टर्स दैट कुड बी पुट ऑन ए सिंगल चिप वर वॉज डबलिंग ईयर एवरी ईयर एंड करेक्टली प्रिडिक्टेड दैट दिस पेस वुड कंटिन्यू इन टू द न्यूर नियर फ्यूचर सो टू द सरप्राइज ऑफ मैनी इंक्लूडिंग मोरे द पेस ऑफ द कंटिन्यूड ईयर आफ्टर year after year and decade after decade the pace is slowed to a uh, to a doubling every 18 months in a uh, in the 1970s because uh, according to his statement the doubling of the transistor per uh, on the same area of a chip uh, is uh, founded in a ic so the moore's law has been defined for that case so uh, because this was found in the in the trend of the ic so that was it was known as the statement of the moore's was considered as moore's law understand so what happens actually the the our ic ic is what uh, ic is a, when i say microchip so it is a area it is a area of ic it is a area of ic and uh, that is a area of 1 micrometer One by one micrometer. When we say microchip, so it is a one. It is a area of one micrometer by one micrometer. So this area, uh, the uh, density of the transistors are measured on this area. That how much transistors are can be fabricated on this area, and this defines that uh, that at which level of the integration has been occurred. Okay. so gordon moore shows that uh, they on this uh, shows that uh, on the uh, number of the transistor on a chip or a micro uh, on a microchip will be doubled at at uh, every uh, in every 2 years okay so this was found that uh, not on a 2 years but in 18 months it was uh, founded that the ice number of the transistors are getting doubled okay so this uh, is this figure provides you the growth in the cpu transistor count and uh, in this figure you uh, you will found that uh, the number of transistors are continuously increasing uh, and on a single chip so uh, we found that 1 billion transistor of a cpu has been founded in the ic so transistor this shows the transistors per chip and it is in billions in the uh, in the in the late 2000 and to in the decade of the 2000 to 2010 and it reaches till the 2009 uh, uh, nearly 10 um, between the 10 is power 8 to 10 is power 9 and it is a great number so we found that the moore's law exhibits for the same for the uh, for the concerning ics but uh, what's for the next and that what is the end of the moore's law if it is if it will be continued so after some years the Uh, ic will be con- uh, will be converted into a atom and it is not possible so what are the consequences which were uh, which were arises in the moore's law or profound so the cost of a chip was has remained virtually unchanged during this year, this period of the rapid growth in the density this means that the cost of the computer logic and the memory circuitry has fallen as a, at a dramatic rate okay so because logic and uh, mem- logic and memory elements are placed close closer together on more densely packed chips the electrical path length is shortened and increasing operating speed so these are the some of the consequences which we got from the moore's law next is the more the computer becomes smaller and making it more convenient in make and to place in a variety of the environment there is a reduction in the power and the cooling requirements and the intercon- interconnections on the integrated uh, circuits uh, are much uh, more reliable than the solder connections with more con- circuitry on uh, each chip uh, there are fewer interchip connections so these were the things which were held in these were the co- consequences of the moore's law 
and uh, and were um, provided by the Moores. And now next next is the von Neumann and the non von Neumann models, which we will discuss here. So John W. Mosley and J. and J. Pressburg Eckert uh, received of an easier way to change the behavior of their uh, calculating machines. They reckoned that uh, memory devices in the form of the mercury delay lines uh, could provide a way to store the program instructions. So basically. Uh, Eckert and Mosley provide a way to store some data in terms of the mercury delay lines. So when he found some that the data can be stored in mercury delayed lines, so we can we can use the data for the future. We can uh, we can try to save the data for the future, and this provide us a more interesting way of architecture for developing a computer. Okay, so this would forever end the tedium. the tedium of the rewriting the system each time it had a, a new problem to solve or an old one to debug so problem were save, solved in a um, problem were saved in a, in the mercury delay line it can be so, saved in a mercury delay line it can be recreated and it the data can be checked further so this was this was the very great research by mosley and eckert and uh, further this research was uh, was again introduced by famous hung hungarian mathematician named john von neumann and john von neumann provided a new a new architecture for the current for the computing system he provided the uh, stored program computers so he provided the stored program computers and uh, these stored program computers are further developed and uh, uh, provided a great revolution in the computing system so von neumann systems uh, uh, were uh, using as the uh, we can say that von neumann systems can be used as a von neumann architecture and these von neumann architectures were further used very much in the uh, in the future and uh, in fact uh, in today also we are using the von neumann architectures in many uh, computing systems so it consists of the three hardware a central processing unit with a control unit a arithmetic logical unit registers small areas and a program counter and main memory so which holds the programs that control the computer's operations and input output systems and input output systems can be used for the uh, providing the data to the to the computing system and the taking the output taking the output data from the computing system so capacity to carry out the essential uh, sequential instruction processing it can also provide a sequential instruction processing which was not possible before these computers contains a single path as uh, either physically or logically between the main memory systems and the control unit of the cpu forcing an alteration of the instruction and execution cycles this a single path is often referred to as a von neumann bottleneck okay so we have one of the problem with the von neumann bottleneck we have uh, one cpu and this cpu was uh, we have one cpu basically and this cpu was has a single data single uh, and there is a memory there is a memory i can say that there is a memory this is a memory uh, but the uh, but the bus which uh, interconnect this cpu and memory is one is only same means code uh, the memory is used to store the code and data which was a problem code plus data was stored in a single memory which was a problem and this uh, uh, this basically uh, slowed down the cpu processing uh, system and uh, it was a, it is a bottleneck of a um, von neumann architecture so you can see that there is a cpu and there is a main memory there is input output systems in von neumann architecture so this is very important von neumann architecture is mostly asked by the students so you should you should learn this von neumann architecture easily so there are there are uh, some registers some program counters instruction registers all these things are available in this uh, registers uh, and uh, one is the arithmetic logical unit to uh, check uh, to, this is used for the 
फॉर द कैलकुलेशन ऑफ द इंस्ट्रक्शन इंस्ट्रक्शन एड्रेस दिस इज दिस इज यूज फॉर द कैलकुलेशन ऑफ ऑपरेंट्स देर इज ए वन कंट्रोल यूनिट द कंट्रोल यूनिट इज यूज टू फॉर द टू कलेक्ट द डेटा टू कलेक्ट टू प्रोवाइड द इंस्ट्रक्शन टू द ए एल यू टू प्रोवाइड द इंस्ट्रक्शन टू द रजिस्टर्स टू प्रोवाइड द इंस्ट्रक्शन टू द इनपुट आउटपुट सिस्टम्स सो ऑल दट ऑल द वर्क इज इज मेड ड्यू टू द ड्यू टू दिस कंट्रोल यूनिट एंड दिस इज ए वॉन न्यूमन आर्किटेक्चर विच वॉज विच इज वेरी मच यूज इन द इन द करेंट कंप्यूटिंग आर्किटेक्चर so the von neumann execution cycle says as that the von neumann uh, uh, instruction can be executed in fetch decode execute cycle and uh, this uh, fetch means fetch means the uh, instruction will be fetch into the into this uh, block and uh, uh, this uh, this uh, uh, this uh, instruction is uh, further uh and further to uh, come in acknowledge that uh, what uh, what to do with the alu then uh, this uh, that uh, then it is decoded then it is decoded here and uh, then executed then after that it is decoded and after the decoding it is executed so all these terms are happened in this block and uh, decoding and ex execution are ex are executed in this block and fetching is is uh, happens between the cpu and the memory location so this happens actually in a von neumann architecture so what we have to do that uh, we have to provide a uh, another memory one is a uh, another architecture which is a modified von neumann architecture so because uh, there was on there were only single uh, single bus there was only single bus which was uh, handled for the code and data so what we have to do we have to provide multiple 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 buses and these multiple buses are address bus data bus control bus for the cpu memory and input output systems so data bus basically data bus for the main memory to the uh, data from the main memory to the cpu registers and vice versa the address bus holds the address of the of the data and the data bus is currently accessing and the control bus carries the necessary control signals that specify how the information transfer to is to take place so these things are important when the modified von neumann architecture was was used and so the case is that we have the volatile memory ram memory and Uh, ROM memory, and in this case, we can say that if it, we are using the memory, then it, the memory may be anything. It may be RAM memory, it may be ROM memory, it may be uh, your hard disk drive, it may be any memory. And the memory provides some um, provides the data to be manipulated into to the CPU by means of the data bus, control bus, and the, uh, by means of the data bus, address bus, and control bus. So, control bus is basically uh, sing unidirection, and it provides the control. and the signals of the control unit to the other uh, other peripherals of the system means memory and uh, input output systems and the address bus holds the address of the location memory location the memory is uh, uh, divided into many many location and these many many location these many locations are known by the address of the particular of the particular byte or, or signals so input and output are also known by known as known by the address of these particular particular input output devices so these all input output devices and memory systems are um, are controlled by the cpu and it they are, uh, and uh, and are assessed by the cpu so data bus has the data it may be it is bidirectional it may it provides uh, the data to the cpu and uh, collect the data from the cpu so these were the so this was this was the von neumann architecture and uh, was uh, uh, conventionally used but uh, now these days there are many architectures which cannot be uh, uh, cannot assess the uh, uh, your uh, your conventional von neumann architecture and uh, we can say that uh, there are many things which can be there are many big problems which which we have to uh, solved in a partial way so what we have to do that uh, we have to provide the problem in a in a some uh portions and in some parts we divide the we divide the big problem in some parts and these problems are uh, then uh, uh, then converted into instructions and then uh, um, some um, then many processors are there to complete this problem and then further these these problems are accumulated and provide some one result so 
for this type of the uh, problems uh, means when we have a very big problem uh, so this type of architecture von neumann architecture has a limitation for example if i have a uh, if i have a very high weight then i will then i have two options one option is that uh, i have to take a bull who can uh, who can pull the pull, pull my weight and uh, another my another of my option then I, that i can use two bulls or three bulls to pull the weight so definitely two or three bulls can uh, can pull the weight more efficiently than that of the single bull so that's why the same thing is used in the uh, parallel uh, parallel computing architecture and these now these days the parallel computing architectures are used many in many ways so this example you can see that this example is for the is for the parallel computing and is an example of the neural mon neural architecture and uh, neural computing so and this is the parallel uh, this this figure shows you the parallel computing computing process so uh, these are two of the two of the exam two uh, two examples of the non von neumann models which are uh, abundantly abundantly used in current world so if a computer if it is not fast enough or powerful enough then instead of trying to develop a faster or more powerful computer why not simple uh, simple use a multiple computer so we use a multi simple multiple computers for uh, to handle a big problem for that case in a parallel computing and it is a non von neumann architecture so enough for this lecture thank you now in a ne in my next lecture i will tell you about the evolution of the intel x86 architecture thank you